In this video cast, we're going to be discussing the scientific method, engineering method, and the differences between scientific hypotheses, theories, and laws. Our objectives today are to familiarize ourselves with the steps of a scientific method, the steps of an engineering method, and understand and state the difference between a scientific hypothesis, a scientific theory, and a scientific law. A scientific method happens when we take a look at an observation and we ask a question. That question could be, why does an apple fall from the tree? First thing we do is we perform some research. With that research, we create a hypothesis. We try to explain the how or why something occurs. It's rather brief, short, but as we call it, it's an educated guess. Once we have a hypothesis, we can go ahead and test it. We'll have some variables that we're going to use to run the experiment. And once we have that information, we're going to analyze the data. From that data, we'll draw a conclusion. Did our data support the hypothesis? Did it reject the hypothesis? If it supports the hypothesis, what we do is we continue to communicate our results, let other people know what happened, and see if they can perform the same type of research and get the same data. When we discuss engineering models, there's actually a little different difference between an engineering model and a scientific method. The purpose of the scientific method is to come up with a way to distinguish or to explain how or why something occurs. With engineering, our purpose is to actually build or construct something that will actually make uh, what we say human life on Earth better. So the first thing we want to do is we want to take a look and define the problem. For instance, in terms of electric cars, they're talking about um, cutting down on pollution from petroleum-based vehicles. So if they wanted to uh, create an electric car, they define the problem, they perform research, they take a look at what type of batteries actually work best for these type of cars. Do you want to use um, little tiny AA batteries? Do you want to build a much larger battery? What do, the, what do you want to do in order to create this car? You specify requirements. It is possible to actually build a very large car that has a huge, huge amount of batteries, large amount of batteries in the back. Um, it could be the size of a minivan, or it could be the size of a RV. However, if you can only fit two people in this vehicle and it costs $200,000 to build, many people won't be buying it. So what you have to do is specify the requirements. We want this car to be able to be purchased by the average person, um, that they would have enough income to purchase and support uh, an electric vehicle. And so you create solutions. What type of batteries can we use? Can we build new batteries to sort of help us in that endeavor? You choose the best solution and build a prototype. Have that vehicle tested. And then once it's been tested, redesign it. See if you can actually make it better, more efficient, smaller, whatever your um, uh, requirements are for this problem that you're working on. That's the difference between a scientific method and an engineering method. Now, a sci scientific hypothesis is an educated guess. We've already talked about what that is in the scientific method. It's an attempt to explain a phenomenon that's observed. It's one that requires the ability to be tested, and even though it's a hypothesis, it has yet to be rigorously tested by other people. It attempts to explain how or why something occurs, and it can be discarded if data does not confirm the hypothesis. In science, we never prove anything we either show that our current data either supports or rejects the hypothesis and theories that we have. A scientific theory has been repeatedly tested to verify or confirm its explanation. It can be a hypothesis or a group of hypotheses. It attempts to explain how or why something occurs. This could be the Big Bang Theory. Big Bang Theory attempts to explain how the universe was created. Darwin's theory of evolution attempts to explain how living creatures evolve. So these are all different types of theories. They can be discarded if, that, if the data does not support the current theory. Um, and it, we do not prove anything in science. Either the data supports or rejects our current understanding. One of the theories that was actually uh, tossed out a while back was Jean-Baptiste Lamarck's evolutionary theory in which uh, he talked about the inheritance of acquired characteristics. For instance, if your father was a blacksmith, you would then be born and have stronger arms because your father had had strong arms. Or uh, giraffes, giraffes trying to uh, reach up to leaves on a tree. The previous generation, if you were a gi giraffe, your parents would have tried to reach up to trees, so therefore their necks would be getting longer. And so when you were born, your neck would be getting longer, longer than theirs. And so this was 
his idea, his theory of uh, evolutionary theory. And of course, now that we know about DNA and the fact that you know you have uh, some of your parents' traits, some of your parents' uh, DNA structures, that because of that DNA, we now know that the inheritance of acquired characteristics um, is not valid. We know from our DNA sequences, this is what your parents' DNA was like, this is what your parents' DNA, or this is what your DNA should be. So that right there is a theory that we have tossed aside. It's been rejected because of our current knowledge and understanding. Now, a scientific law simply states a fact and implies a relationship between elements. Many laws take on mathematical form, and again, we do not prove anything in science. Either the data supports or rejects current understanding. There was a law proposed in 1829 by Doberainer, and it was the law of triads, where at the time they had chemicals or elements that had similar characteristics. And so if you took three elements that had similar characteristics and you took the heavy element and the light element, added up their weights and divided by two, you'd get the weight of the middle element. Well, this worked well until we discovered more chemicals, more elements, and at that point we had to toss out this law of triads because this relationship did not work any longer. Now, two examples of scientific laws that still work are the three laws of motion by Newton as well as the laws of thermodynamics. These are laws that currently uh, the relationships e exist and continue to work. Three laws of motion, basically the first law says an object in motion stays in motion in a straight line at a constant velocity, constant speed, and so that's something that we've observed and we have yet to find anything that uh, behaves any differently, and so that law continues to stand.